Hey you guys, welcome aboard Crab Central Station. My name is Darcy and in this video we are going to talk all about foraging. Let's get started. Alright you guys, before we get into the nitty and gritty of this video, I just want to give you a quick disclaimer. If you are planning on gathering any of these foraging goods from your own personal property, please make sure that you are gathering them from a pesticide free property. I live in a neighborhood and I don't spray pesticides on my property myself. However, my city actually comes through our neighborhood with a, a pesticide truck and they spray for mosquitoes. So that means I can't gather any of these forging items from my house. So just please keep that in mind. In the description below, we will link to a couple of companies that we go to all the time for our forging goods. They are wonderful companies. They are Hermit Crab Safe, and we're happy to share that with you guys down below. Also, we will share with you a link to all of these safe and unsafe forging goods because I don't want to waste your time by listing all of the items. There are so many safe items that you can include in your tanks for your hermit crabs, but there are some that you want to stay away from. So please, again, check out that link in the description below. All right, that being said, we are going to cover the different categories of foraging goods. And before I go into that, I just want to tell you guys, like foraging is so important for your hermit crabs. This is a part of their diet that should be in their tanks 24 seven every day of the year. Just think about their natural environment along the coastal parts of the beaches. They have access to all these foraging goods at any time they want. I can also tell you from experience, if you offer these foraging goods, your hermit crabs will be more active. They're going to feel comfortable in their environment. They're going to have the nutrients that they need, and you're actually providing for them enrichment through these foraging items. Now let's talk about these different categories of foraging items. One that we keep in our tanks all the time, really we use it actually for the crabs to get from one tank into the other, um, is wood, wood pieces or bark pieces. And there are so many different types that are safe, but this is an item that, that your crabs can eat for nutrition. It's something they can climb on, which is enrichment. You can also use larger wood pieces like this for them to hide in. It's all around a wonderful and beautiful piece of decor for your tank. Another thing that you can think about is moss. So there are a lot of different kinds of mosses. This is um, called a cushion moss right here. Um, we also have something called a lichen. This is kind of tough actually, so you would want to keep it moistened. You can also have sphagnum moss. These are things, again, you can keep in your tank at all time. We use mosses to increase humidity and decrease humidity. If you're confused about that, check out this video right here. It's also a great item to, take, to keep around your pools because um, it can soak up any extra moisture that's kind of splashing out of your pool from your bubblers. Um, and so the, the crabs just absolutely love to eat that. Again, they our crabs like to take a little nap on it. It's like a soft little cushion for them. Um, it's beautiful as well. So moss is a great thing to add to your tank. All right, these are a couple things that we like to just sprinkle along the top of the substrate. This encourages your hermit crabs to actually get out and explore their tank. Again, increasing their activity. This is something that they would naturally find sprinkled about on the land. And so um, one of those is leaves. And there are a lot of safe leaves. Of course, um, this is a great time of the year in fall to be collecting them. We also like to include millet. So you can buy these in a package um, at most of your pet stores. They're in the bird aisle actually. And we just lay these on the substrate throughout the tank. They absolutely love it. Sometimes they can um, kind of sprout, so that's kind of fun as well. Also something you can leave out you guys is feathers. So this is a great foraging item for them. They do actually much on these feathers. Flowers are also great. Now we don't leave flowers um, in our tank a whole lot during the fall and winter. Again, we try to mimic their natural environment. So this would be one of those foraging items that we would add in the spring. But there are a lot of great flowers and they add so much pretty color um, to the tank and your hermit crabs just love them. All right, two items that we keep in separate dishes, but again, they're in the tank 24 seven. I mean, at all times, actually, this is right here behind me in this coconut half um, is green sand. And again, you can buy this um, 
hardware stores, Walmart, and that sort of thing, you usually find it in the garden section. We buy ours online, Amazon. There are links in our description to these things, you guys. Um, green sand just comes from the ocean bottom. It's a lot of great nutrients of algaes and things like that. And then worm castings. This is like powdered gold to the hermit crabs. I'm not even kidding you. Worm poop, that's what worm castings is, like worm poop. But hermit crabs go wild for this stuff. Again, we keep it in a coconut half just like this on the other side of the tank and we just refill it as they kind of munch on it and, it, and it, they eat it. So as it gets low, we just refill it. The last thing you guys that we leave out in our tanks is a great calcium source. Again, as your hermit crabs are molting, they really need a lot of calcium to harden up their new exoskeleton. So a couple of things that you can leave out for that is coral, pieces of coral like this, even seashells. Um, they can munch on those as well, or oyster shell. Those are all really good sources of calcium. And we also leave out cuddle bone. Cuddle bone is something else that you can find in the uh, bird section of your pet store. And you can either grind it into a powder and put it in a dish or in with their food. We often just leave the cuddle bone and chop it into pieces and just kind of, or break it up into pieces and just put it around the tank for them. And they'll, they'll use their pinchers to pinch off of it, but kind of depends on what you're looking for in your tank and what works best. As you can see, if you are adding all of these foraging items all the time for your crabs, in addition to their dish of food with all the other nutrients they need, in addition to their two pools and their hide and their exosaucer, you can see why hermit crabs need so much tank space. All of these items fill up that space pretty quickly. Plus you want your hermit crabs to have the space in the room um, to be able to actually explore these items. Let's talk about how to prepare these items before you actually put them in your tank. The main reason for this, you guys, is you do not want little buggy critters from the outdoors coming into your inside tank. Yes, hermit crabs are going to see those critters out in the wild, but again, this is an enclosed environment. This is not an open, big wide world, right? So we don't wanna bring those critters in here. It causes a lot of issues. It usually means a total tank redo. So it is well worth your time and effort to go through these steps of preparing these items properly. All right, the first one we're gonna talk about is wood or bark. So again, it can be any kind of a stick that you get from your backyard. It can be pieces of bark or larger pieces of wood, choya wood, cork rounds, and that sort of thing. So you're gonna go ahead and get a big bucket. I use a five gallon bucket from Home Depot. You can put fresh or salt water and go ahead and make sure that it is primed. You're going to soak these pieces of wood for 24 hours. After that, go ahead and put these pieces of wood on a cookie sheet and you're actually gonna bake these in your oven. Now, disclaimer, you're putting wood in a hot oven. You have to be home for this. This is something you absolutely have to be able to keep an eye on so that you don't cause a fire. All right, kids, don't do this by yourself. Have your parents help you. So you want to put your oven on the lowest setting it can possibly go on. Put your wood pieces on a cookie sheet and put them in the oven and you're literally just going to bake them until they're completely dry. That will kill all the extra little buggies and you won't be bringing those into your tank. They will be completely sanitized for you at that point. All right, let's talk about leaves that you gather. So again, you want to go ahead and wash these so you can get a, a kitchen mixing bowl or some type of Tupperware bucket, put in your fresh primed water, and you wanna give these leaves a really good rinsing. You can use your hands, that's totally fine. Okay, you can rinse them several times um, just so they look good and clean. Then go ahead and put your leaves on maybe some paper towels, or if you have like an old beach towel or something like that, you can lay them out on until they completely dry. To go ahead and preserve these, and usually you're gonna collect a lot of them. You're not gonna put them all in the tank at one time, right? So go ahead and put them in Ziploc bags, like we have here, and then freeze them. Um, this is going to keep them um, fresh. They're going to keep from the critters being in there and all that kind of stuff. And then you've got easy Ziploc bags to pull out and refresh your tanks as you need. All right, let's talk about the moss. 
So cushion moss or sphagnum moss, again, this is if you're forging it, okay? Not if you're purchasing it from an approved seller. Sphagnum moss, usually you already buy that in a bag, it's already been cleaned. So that's like totally okay just to go ahead and put in your tank. These are, remember, just items that you are forging yourself. All right, so go ahead and clean your moss and clean your sphagnum, um, I'm sorry, your lichens. Again, in a dish with your prime treated water, give them a good rinse, and then you're going to let them sit on paper towel, just like you did the leaves. Let them sit on paper towel and completely dry, and then put them in a Ziploc bag and keep them frozen in the freezer. I like to go ahead and keep them frozen for 48 hours before I put them in the tank. And again, I'm only gonna put a few pieces at a time. The extras can stay in the freezer until I'm ready to use them. All right, the other items, you guys, green sand and the cuddle bone, the millet and the worm castings, those are all bought from the store and they are already ready and prepared to go into your tanks. Again, just find your dishes that you wanna keep them in. Uh, your coral pieces, you just wanna make sure that they are natural coral pieces or natural shells that you're putting in for your calcium. Sometimes you can find these and they've been painted or altered or bleached. So just make sure wherever you're sourcing these items from that they are natural and they aren't gonna have any kind of chemical. It kind of goes along the whole line with all of these items being pesticide free. All right, I really hope that this video about foraging and how to prepare foraging items is really helpful to you guys. I cannot really express or stress enough how important these items are to offer your hermit crabs. And I know once you guys start adding these to the tank, you are going to see a big improvement in the activity of your hermit crabs in their color. Oh my goodness, our hermit crabs, when they start eating leaves in the fall especially, their color of just gets so rich and darker. It's just beautiful. So it does take time, obviously, if you are new to hermit crab keeping, your hermit crabs need time to recover, so this isn't something that's gonna happen overnight. But over time, as you guys offer these items, your, your hermit crabs will benefit tremendously. And I highly suggest that you give this a try. Again, we keep every single one of these items in our tank 24 seven. If you haven't subscribed to our channel already, you guys, please subscribe right now so that we can bring you more content just like this and hit the bell so you'll be notified when we drop new content. Also, we do tons of fun stuff over on all of our social media platforms, so make sure that you're following us over there. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below, and we will try to get back to you guys as quickly as possible. We sure appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.